Hi, everyone. I am Lauren Cristella, Chief Advancement Officer of the Committee of 70, back for part two of our resource session uh, for all of you fantastic people helping voters uh, make sure that their vote and their voice count in this election. I am joined by Vanessa McGrath. Introduce yourself, Vanessa. <laughs> Hello everyone, thank you, thank you, Lauren. My name is Vanessa McGrath and I am the Election Protection Director for the Voter Project here in Pennsylvania. And I'm just jazzed for part two. Here we go. There was such great demand. We've been asked <laughs> to do some more for you all. This time we're diving in on voter intimidation. Lots of election protection, voter intimidation questions. Um, certainly a lot of panic inducing, anxiety producing uh, news bits out there. So we're gonna hopefully clear up as much as humanly possible. Uh, for you. So question one, what if a voter calls and says they're being challenged at their polling place? So if a voter is being challenged, uh, so first of all, a challenge is when uh, voters identity, residence or compliance with the election code is being questioned. So for example, if I go to the polls and say my name is Lauren Cristella, that's not me, that's her, uh, but my neighbor standing behind me in line knows that I'm not Lauren, he or she can tell the poll worker that I am not who I say I am. Appropriate challenges help stop voter fraud, but inappropriate ones can discourage voters by making them jump through additional hoops in order to vote. So as a volunteer, you want to gather as much information as possible from the voter about what has happened, how the challenge went down, what the exact challenge was. Uh, and even if the voter can't resolve the challenge at the polls, they are entitled to vote provisionally still. So they should ask for a provisional ballot and they should still be permitted to vote at that polling location. When in doubt, provisional ballot. I always ask for provisional, don't leave without voting. Uh, okay, what is voter intimidation? Let's back to basics. Yes, um, and I know a lot of folks are having anxiety, but we wanna make sure that even if we are internally feeling that, we wanna externally be exuding optimism and being positive and making sure folks feel secure about their voting experience. Um, and a lot of people calling the hotline will probably be uh, quite panicked or nervous. So uh, to the extent we can calm and quell that anxiety, we should try to do so. So in terms of voter intimidation, it's any activity that threatens, harasses, or intimidates intimidates voters, including intending to have the effect of interfering with any voter's right to vote, whether it occurs outside the polling place or inside the polling place, it is still illegal. So some examples that we've heard about are cars blocking polling place entrances so people can't get inside, uh, people taking pictures, pictures or videotaping voters without their permission, or people telling uh, voters that they should or should not vote. Um, so those are some of the examples that we have seen thus far of voter intimidation. Okay, so what should voters do if, uh, if a vote, I'm sorry. What should volunteers do if a voter calls and says that they are being intimidated or harassed at their polling place? So if you get a call from a voter saying that they are feel like they're uh, you know, being subject to voter intimidation or that they are being harassed, the most important thing to do is to first uh, ask them some questions and gather as much information that you're able to uh, get so that you can determine whether or not this needs to be escalated. So the first thing you should do is ask the voter, uh, what was the polling location where this occurred? So get the location. Was, uh, was the, did the intimidation, uh, ledge intimidation occur outside the polling location or inside? The more specifics you can get on this, the better. Ask them what time it happened and also as much detail as you can about what exactly precisely happened. What did someone say? What did they do? And was this happening to any other voters in addition to the voter that's calling? Um, also ask them about what they did in response other than making this phone call. Did they talk to any of the election officials such as the judge of election, judges of election or a poll worker? Uh, you know, even ask if they talked to a, a poll watcher or someone else on site and ask them as well what they relate to that individual and what actions or steps they may have taken. Um, also ask if they saw any voter guardians. So there are going to be a lot of folks out on election day. These the voter guardians will have be wearing yellow vests that are in um, Philadelphia or have some sort of yellow pin. And uh, ask if the voter talked to anyone who was a voter guardian. 
and ask if there are any other officials who else might have been at the polling location where there's security guards, there happen to be police officers around, if there were, how far or close to the polling place could they estimate were they, uh, ask if they were able to vote uh, or not. Um, and if they have any pictures, great, ask if they have any photos or if they're able to go back and take photos if the situation is still occurring without it causing any sort of escalation. We, of course, don't want to make any situation worse. So I would also uh, advise that you tell the voter to, uh, if they're still at the polling location, that they may want, that they should alert the poll, a poll worker. Ideally, you want to go to the judge of elections and let them know that this is occurring. They'll have a, hand, they'll have a handbook with phone numbers in it and will uh, be advised and trained on how to escalate uh, certain issues. And that person would also have the authority to make sure if someone is inside the polling place or very close for, for, uh, proximity to the polling place to ask them to leave. Uh, also tell the voter they should look for the voter guardians if they have uh, weren't able to find one. And because these pe people are trained specifically in de-escalation tactics. And they also could look for and in terms of what election protection can do, they can escalate the issue to volunteers on the ground so that they can go out to the polling place as well and make sure that no other voters are intimidated or harassed. And so in terms of what you also can do for the folks on the hotline, uh, if necessary, you should contact your uh, captain as soon as possible, let them know the ticket number and what detail you've gathered from the voter. And the captain can then take it from there to make sure the volunteers on the ground know what the issue is and that it uh, needs to be worked on. That was comprehensive. Um, I tried, you. Lauren. <laughs> I liked your alleged, <laughs> alleged voter intimidation. That's how you know Vanessa's a lawyer. <laughs> uh, all right, I think that covers it for voter intimidation on election day. Uh, we definitely want to wish everyone a ton of success in handling these calls. And uh, if you have questions, make sure you know where to go. Uh, there's lots of great resources, Committee of 70, the Voter Project, Common Cause, obviously, and your resources uh, that have been provided to you. So thanks so much uh, for your work and for volunteering and happy election day. Thank you.